Hello everyone, welcome back to IUB Love channel for another Epic Games Era video. In today's video, I'll be going over the poll that I have published 6 days ago where I was asking about uh, what content should I prioritize first that you are interested in. So I posted about 5 options that you can choose and those options are Anna's Trial, Void Tower, Arena, Champion Spotlight and Dungeon Farming which uh, consists of Arcane Dominator and No Man's Land. So since the Void Tower is the highest, probably I'll cover that first. The most difficult part for this Void Tower would be the Void Tower Heart. I've already completed the Void Tower normal, just using AoE Nucus, just nuke everyone all the way up from floor 1 to 100. But I think it'll be slightly more difficult compared to Void Tower Heart since the enemies there can last a bit longer due to more health and more defense stats. So let's take a look uh, at, uh, at these enemies. So let me uh, click the challenge button here. And as you can see, there are two new rune marks for this uh, Void, Tower, uh, uh, Void Tower rotation. So let me go through the rune mark. So basically it mentions that at the beginning of each round, the enemy gains one stack of blessing of the seven gods, max seven stacks. So basically, when the enemy receives seven stack of this uh, blessing, what will happen is they will be able to stun your heroes. So in order to counter this, right, there are two ways. First is to just nuke them down before the seven stack uh, could happen, and the second option would be to uh, build a high resistance hero to resist the stun. Alright, so the second rune mark would be the enemy defense is increased by 50%. If the enemy is under control, this rune mark is invalid for the duration of the control effect. So for this one, probably in order to counter this, you can use crowd control heroes like freeze, torn, and what else? Huh? Stun. Uh, basically those things or else you can also use uh, ignore defense heroes such as Charles which can just bypass their defenses wait uh, is it Charles or I think, I think it's Charles uh. Charles deals true max damage um, in true damage which ignores defense so any, any heroes that deals true damage probably can ignore all those defenses Okay, so I'm already currently uh, at floor 11. So let's let's go through them. Show why the Void Tower screen hang here. I'm unable to close this thing. Strange. Hmm, there's something wrong with the window there. So let me try to go in back. Hmm. It doesn't close. I think there's a bug with this window here. So let me just go through. So previously, for the first uh, first 10 floors, I just used this free, free to play team. But it took quite a long time to complete because each floor would take around about uh, 10 minutes. Uh, around about 5 to 10 minutes, which is pretty long. So usually, what I use, let me save the team first. So I can. Save the squad. Save here. Alright, I will save this one. So previously I was using this team. Oops, why I save it again? Delete this one. Previously I was using my speed nuke team, just uh, legendary heroes here, followed by one buffer, buffer hero, which is Joseph. Since his increased attack and increased defense uh, lasts for the entire first two turns. So probably I will just use Thundering Purgatory and Gaius Renewal for some healing since there is no dedicated healer here. So let's see how this battle goes. So this wave has uh, two waves for floor 11. Uh, so this is the first uh, option that you can use, just pure nuke. You just need to have uh, three AoE nucus such as like Avera, Hydrisia, and uh, Valyria. I've already speed tuned them so they, that they go in order. 
which is uh, Joseph comes in with the Sundering Purgatory defense down, followed by his uh, AoE buff up. Then Avera comes in to nuke, followed by Hydrisa and Valeria. So this is the first uh, floor 11 covered. Uh, let me try this multi battle. What's this? Clear on. Oh, I need to clear the entire 100 floors to get this one. Alright. Let's click battle. So this uh this team I also use this as for my adventure mythic speed farming. Uh, since it's quite fast. Basically all all of these heroes are above 150 speed. To go first before the enemy takes their turn. Alright. So currently Valera has the highest amount of attack. So when Joseph performs his what's it called? Perform his basic attack, he will apply the the speed up buff on Valeria. Damn, Lydia got so much so much dodge. I think I think that's the I think it's due to the due to the new buff that they have implemented. I think from 20% dodge to 35% dodge. It's crazy. Okay, Lida is annoying. Alright, so we are now on floor 13. Another Lydia, oh my god. Okay. It seems strange that I, I'm not able to use multi battle, although I've already completed these floors in the previous tower rotation. Probably Ace developers can you know, fix this. Okay, first wave gone, then wave. Oh, Lydia is still standing. The dodge increases her survivability significantly. I think there's too much dodge on her. I think the way to counter this is to have a higher precision. High precision. Prevent her from dodging. Luckily, I have Hydrisia slightly higher precision. Okay, now we are on floor 14. Currently, there's Evera and place Uzak here. And how I build these three AoE Dukas is they are all in every set, so they deal additional 50% more damage. Thanks everyone for the subs and likes. Wow. Melissa is quite fast. That's the good thing about uh, Val uh Valeria. When she when she perform a kill, right? She will perform her second AOE attack. These are the three best rookie summon heroes for for farming adventure meeting. Alright, so we now have Emojan, Jacob, and Ozak. This this team composition relies on a lot of count, uh, a lot of joint attacks because Emojan will, Emojan or Emojan, Emojan will always perform a joint attack whenever his allies attack, and Jacob can perform a multi attack. I think I. Uh, uh, I covered Jacob in the Bane Wraith because he's quite good in dealing multiple attacks. And Chris Ozak is also quite dangerous because he can remove the buff. So if he's able to remove the buff from my my heroes, then they'll do less damage. Okay. 
I think Valeria is a bit slow. He only has around about 150 speed. All the rest has 160 speed. So that's a bad thing. What I will what I will do here is instead of uh, what is uh, let me see if this works or not. Okay, Valeria comes in with the kill. If if this does not work right, I will perform the run manually by having Hydrisa to perform the second AOE attack, her, her special ability that can apply the AOE speed down, so Valeria can and go first before the enemy takes their turn. Alright, we are on floor 16. I heard that some players are having some difficulty for floor 20 and floor 30. I think this, is, this was posted by Kills Fracture two days ago. He says he's stuck on Foodie Quest that to beat floor 30 of hard tower so yeah he asked that if you could go over floor 20 and floor 30 that would be helpful so i'm not sure whether you have the champions i have because different account will have different sorts of champions and currently these champions are the ones that i have uh, geared properly for to, to do uh, most of the contents in this game, like adventure farming, uh, dungeon farming, and arena, new, uh, arena, arena new team. All right, we are at floor seventeen. Previously, for the first Doom Tower rotation, uh, it was much more simpler because uh, it doesn't have these uh, fancy runes that prevent players from uh, achieving uh, floor 100. The second uh, Doom Tower rotation, that's why most uh, that's why most of the players can just use a tanky team to clear the first Doom Tower rotation. The second Doom Tower rotation has a special rune that uh, that allows the enemy to deal damage based on their max health. So the longer you you try to stall the rounds, the more damage they will they will deal to your heroes. And uh, now for the third Doom Tower rotation, they they seem to change it so that uh, after the sound turn, the enemies have the ability to perform stun. And this will be worse if the how say if the hero has AOE attack. So the more AOE attacks they do, they can stun your entire team. So we are on floor 18 right now. Oh yeah, if you if your heroes are not fast enough, where you uh then you can use Bean Strix as the alternative. Or else you just equip them in uh, speed boots. Currently I have Hydrisia and Evera in speed boots while, while Valera is in attack boots. That's why they can go quite fast. Alright, uh, this floor has been completed. We are now on floor 19. One more floor to go.
All right, we have very rich flow 20 heart. So this one has a Dark Nicholas, Yolanda, Rosak, and Kane. So let's try something new. So uh, Dark Nicholas has this ability to apply this uh, shield. So, in, so to counter him, we'll be using this Water Prison to stun him and remove his buff. If you do not have Hydrisia, you can use that talent instead. Oh no, Otto uses... Wait. I should put this on, on Otto to save my spells. Again. Well, what happened to the coloring of this background? Alright, I already turned off the auto. Let me just apply the attack up buff and defense uh defense up buff. Basically for the first wave I just can just nuke them down with AoE attack. I just reserve the Sundering Purgatory for the last wave. What's this one? Let me let me just attack someone here. Yep. Alright, so let me Oh, Hydrisha is slower than them. Interesting. Right, apply. Wait, should I apply the Purgatory first? Sundering Purgatory first. Back up, defense up, buff. Oh, so the usage of double spells... Usage of double spells only book for Arena. The, the limitation of the double spells. Can I remove his buff here? Not enough accuracy. Let me slow everyone down. This guy buff is... Oh, everyone's ultimate is on cooldown, right? Okay, okay. So I just reserved the water prison when... When Dark Nicholas is able to put up his what's it called? Unkillable? Hmm, let me think first one. Uh, so, 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 so. It's unremovable buff for this one. It's unkillable. Alright. Then we use this uh, water prison that casts aqua cage, inflicting stun on an enemy for one turn and removing one positive effect. So since uh, Dark Nicholas got one health and he has this annoying death immunity, which has uh, four, four stacks. Huh? So in order to counter this, right, you will need to use how, how do we say, uh, multi hit champions to hit him at least four times, like Jacob. But for this scenario, I'll be using the water prison instead to remove this annoying, what's it called? Death immunity buff. Okay. This one here. Seriously, only take out one.
I just remove the buff. Young, okay, he's gone. The good thing about Ivera is she has this bonus attack that can quickly knock out uh, this uh, death immunity. So it doesn't work as planned. I, I think probably the reason why it doesn't remove is because due to the lack of uh, focus. Probably it's due to that. See how much damage you have taken. Okay. So that's floor 20. Now we are heading to floor 21. Mostly blue and greens. Let's try out something different. Blue and green. I'll use try something different. Huh? But this team is quite slow. Because my Natalia is speed tuned. The speed tune for Ash Magistra farming. And this one, if you're if you're using this type of team, right? You need to manual it. So this is basically just all epic all epic heroes. Let's say if you do not have legendary heroes, I'll just use this. Huh? I'll just uh, perform a speed up buff. Let's knock someone up here. Three heroes. Okay, down. So since Wind Strikes already, how do I say, already use her this thing, these enemies can overlap Natalia. So let me see, who's the most dangerous guy here? Okay. I'll reserve this one for Luna Melissa. I'll just attack someone here, try to reduce their speed. So Hydrisha, the enemy here is quite fast, so I'll try to apply the speed down on her. I apply the Sundering Purgatory by Luna Melissa since she has higher focus than Green Strikes. And now I'll be crowd controlling the enemies. See, can I clear Hydrisa with him? Yep, can. He's weak enough. Wow, that lets us dominate. Dominate everyone here. All right. Okay, here there's what is called Lightwing Zachary, Vance, and some green guys here. See how do we perform here? Alright, so this one does two wave. The the reason why I need to use Wind Strikes, uh, Wind Strike Roaring Gale for wave one instead of wave two is because I need to buff up Natalia. Because without the buff up, right, she will not she will not gain the extra buff from her passive skill. Let me show you this one. So she needs at least one buff to trigger this Arcane Ward. So she gains another buff, which is this immune buff. And with three buffs, then only can attack all these four enemies. By the default, she can only attack one. For every buff she has, she will she'll be able to attack three three heroes here. So since these enemies are health is just you know three thousand, you you do not need sundering purgatory on them. Okay, this way is clear. And I believe, uh, who's this guy? Lightwing Zachary has has been buffed, and his counter attack is quite dangerous. So I'll stun this guy first to 
prevent him from counter attacking your heroes here. And what's next? Okay, I will, I will reserve this Winds of Peace to reset the ultimate cooldown for Luna Maliza. So let me slow down this go back. Go back is dangerous because he can apply this. He can take multiple turns because the more the more speed he has, the more turns he can get. So let me speed down this guy first. Place the Sundering Purgatory for more damage and Torn. Right, so let me check who's ha who has the lowest health here. So Vance has the lowest health. Let me try to take him out first. Oh no, this Bulbarif revive. And he has more health, is it? The dangerous, the dangerous part about Bulbarif is if he manages to kill one of your heroes, he can reset his ultimate skill cooldown. Okay. That's floor 22, now we are on floor 23. Uh, currently, this team has fire and water. I think we are still okay. So as usual, I'll just apply the data buff and attack up buff. Just attack someone here. Oh yeah, you might be, you need to be careful that, that some of the heroes here can counterattack, such as like this person. Uh, I'm not sure what's her name here. Yes, uh, this has a skill that has a 15% chance to counterattack with their basic ability upon any attack on an on an ally. So if you counter, if you attack her, she won't counter. All right, so I'll be just nuking them. Since they just have like 4,000 health. Alright, this guy's down. So who's the most annoying here? Alright, so the most annoying person here will be Cal. Because Cal has the passive ability. Uh, I mean... Passive ability. What's it called? This uh, this passive vindictive, which counter attacks when attacked, dealing fifty percent damage. So the best way to counter this guy would be to just just stun this guy. And there's another hero here as well, which is Thomas. He also can perform counter attack with his passive skill here. So this team is mainly about counter attack teams. So who's the fastest here? Is Carl? Let me just slow him down. So as you notice, when I attack him, he counter attacks. When I run, who who has the lowest health here? Eleven, twelve, fifteen. Let me take down Carl first. Because you can copy your skills. Right. Luckily, Zedlux is built quite strong. To so just one hit. One hit kill all those enemies. Alright, we are on floor... What's this called? Floor 24. See how this goes. Okay, buff up. Let's attack someone here. Come down. If you don't, if you do not have Natalia built, you can use your AOE nuclear such as a uh, Hydrisia. So 
So as you can notice that there's one hero here with his stealth ability. So we cannot target him with uh spell. We can target spell. And Bess is quite dangerous because he can counter attack. 100% chance to launch a counter attack with a basic ability against any slow enemies. So if you see the sequence here, basically Vance will be able to counter attack my Natalia here since he's faster than, than Natalia. So the most dangerous person it will be Uruzak. So let me uh, stun him first. And I'll slow down Vance. So now Vance will not be able to counter attack uh, my Natalia since he's much more slower than, than her. So now Luna and Melissa will apply the Sundering Purgatory, followed by her ultimate ability, Assault, just to protect my, my heroes from danger. So let's check again. Where's the lowest health? Vance. So I'll go for Vance first. Okay. Luckily, the Lux uh, did not get a deflection from Borden. Now we are on floor 25 with uh, Tia and Vance. The problem with Tia is every time you take a turn, Tia will apply this, this Frost Spike which decreases your, your speed. So, it, so it's best to just nuke her as fast as possible. Get above. Step on someone here. Hopefully, I can look down that green tawny guy. Oops, no, nope. lucky. Let me finish off with Zedlux Ultimate Face of Carnage. Alright, we are. Oh, this wave has three waves. So, okay. So, in, in this scenario, right, since I have uh, Luna Melissa as the backup, I can use Luna Melissa to. I'll say. to turn the enemy. So once we reach to the to the third wave, the strikes will reset the ultimate cooldown for 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 Luna Melissa here. Or oh, probably not also because Natalia will also she she needs buff. Let's see how how this thing works. So as you notice, only 3 buff, or 2 buff, only target 3, three enemies here. I think one guy is quite dangerous. I think it's this guy, Mulago. Mulago has the ability to freeze... Nice attack against enemies affected by Frozen, have 100% chance of triggering a joint attack, okay. But I do not want Joseph to... Joseph is here. Vance is here. Let me see, can I nuke them down? Because currently... Let's try first and see what will happen. Okay, let me just freeze Joseph. Oh, stun. Does Tia have a lot of health? No, nope, not really. So let me stun Van, uh, Hugh because in case 
the Tyler wasn't able to take down uh, Hugh due to uh, deflection, like as you can see here. Then the, st the stun will help to prevent them from attacking. Alright. Okay, it was a clean, clean kill. We are moving on to floor 26. What does floor 26? So mostly fire. Fire here. Let's see how it works. Three waves or two waves only? Get up off. Tap on someone. Yep. Okay, I've got more green players here, so the legs will come in to perform the finishing blow. Okay, second wave. So, I do speed up buff, and this Melissa will go. Go after my Luna Melita, so let me stun her first. Okay, let me reserve this one for, for something. Then Hector will come in here. Let me try to slow down this guy. Okay, steering purgatory. Turn. And yep. Well, I need to take down this abort because each time he uses his basic attack, right, he can heal himself. Alright, so. Floor 26 completed. Oh, floor 27. Oh no, I don't have energy left. Use this one. New coupon. So here there is a brand who, who is able to counter attack each time your hero attacks him. So, I mean, whenever you attack his allies, brand will counter attack. So the best way to counter is to use the water prison as well. Stun him first. So as usual, just tap. Just uh, reserve your special abilities, ultimate abilities here. Then finish off with that lux. So, Brent has this uh, passive skill, right? Uh, let's see, this one. No, oh, this one. This is shield. So, this is his passive skill, King Sanction. When an ally is attacked, there is a 100% chance to counterattack. And the bad thing about this is, whenever he counterattacks, he has a 80% chance to apply this attack down. So, when, this at when he applies this attack down, right? Your attacker heroes, like for my case, I have uh, Natalia and Zedlux. If you apply those, then the damage uh, output will significantly decrease. So it's, it's best to avoid that. And to counter him, we just use this water prison to stun him. So stun this guy. And yeah. And another thing to point out is this is Brozak. Brozak has a special ability, a uh, special tra trait ability. Uh, that whenever an ally whose health is below 50% and takes a single target damage, the damage is reduced to zero and this character takes 50%. So it's best the best way to counter him to use the uh, AoE attack. So I'm not sure whether my Natalia is able to to perform that since this one is single target. Let's see what's her, what's the skill behavior. Just slower, slower. Just slow down this guy. Okay, Sundering Purgatory. On. As you notice, know, Brand wasn't able to counter attack because he he's stunned. 
Alright. Let me use this carnage on this girl this girl. The dark chick. Oh my god. So as you notice, the this guy has less than fifty percent health. That's why it it takes the brute damage here. So let me think for a while. So I need to counter attack again. Just for safety purpose, let me turn them again. Because the thorn will also... This sucking crap. Stun this guy. I think I think we need we need to take out take down this guy first. Right. Because the guy, the guy's protecting is protecting the the heroes behind. It'd be an easy uh easy solution just to just use the uh in request, but I think since Natalia's attack is all single target, that's why it, her, her ability does not work on Bruzak. So you need to target Bruzak. Okay, that's something new I learned. So every every battle is uh is a new experience. So here there's Avera. Oops, what happened? Off. Oh. Tap. Here in new. Okay. Here. Who's the most dangerous guy here? Let me see the skills first. This one grand stealth and down. Okay, so this guy is dangerous. So if my hero health drops 50%, then this guy can counter attack. But guy health is quite high. Let me this guy first. Slow down this guy. Oh, clean. All right, we are on floor twenty nine now. This time we have Rosak, Yolanda, and Benz. Alright, alright, it's quite difficult because he has a lot of health. Let's see how it goes. Speed up. Tap this guy. And finish off with this one. Right, with two now. So who's the dangerous guy here? Okay, can I? I don't think guard can be removed. I think Yolanda here will be quite dangerous. Stun her first. Slow down this guy.
Yes, he doesn't have the gun. Then quickly remove him. I need to second from the second turn now. Damn, this guy's tanky. Super tanky. Alright. I think we have reached floor 30 right now. Wait, floor 30. Floor 30 has more hex, Z ducks, and two of these lizard guys. Get up off. So since Natala is weak to uh, wood element, so I'll just try to do some damage on him. Okay. I applied the OE torrent in case that Zedlock wasn't able to kill these guys. Wow, this more hex is so, so tanky. Turn this guy. Yep. Okay, I think that's all for floor 30. I think it took around quite some time, around about 50 minutes to come to just to go through from floor 11 to floor 30. See the better report. Roughly the same, like around 57 to 50,000 damage dealt. Alright, so let me collect the reports here. So. By clearing floor 20 and floor 30, you get two foodies. Uh, I think every floors, every 10 floors, you get foodie and diamonds. But the, what's this called? Advanced Summoning Crystal and this Stardust is our alternative. So we also have this Custom Stack Summoning Chest. Oh, we have this one as well. Okay, good. So let me claim them. Alright. So that's how I clear floor 11 to floor 30. There are two types of teams that you can use. It's either you use a crowd controlling team as you saw, which is uh, using uh, bean strikes. Uh, let me show you the, how, how I gear these uh, heroes. So the heroes that I use to clear from floor 20 to 30 is uh, using a crowd controlling team and, and also a speed uh, speed buffer. So currently the only speed buffer in the team is Instrax. So she has this uh, special ability Roaring Gale that applies the OE buff, speed buff, buff and attack up buff. So if your hero's uh, speed are quite slow, 
you can use her instead. So currently my Natalette and Zlax is all below 140 speed. That's why to make up for their lack of speed, I'll need to use Winstrex in the team. And since my heroes are quite slow, they make up for this uh, slowness by having a higher amount of attack. That's why as you notice that Zlax and Natalia can kill most of the enemies with ease. So this win strikes and let me show you how I built him with her. So these are her total stats. You just need to focus on speed. I think around probably 180 speed which would be sufficient for Void Tower Heart. And you need some focus so she can apply the stun. And some health and defense so she can be tanky. Face the enemy able to f uh, survive for the from the first attack. Okay, secondly, we instruct here. Oh, sorry, not we instruct Luna, Luna Melissa. Here are her total stats. So since Luna Melissa will be taunting the enemy, you want you want her to be as healthy and defensive as possible. So so, so she can take the hit, and she will be the second fastest in the team. Followed uh, after Winstrax. So Winstrax go first, followed by Luna Melissa. And she needs a high amount of focus for her to land the taunt ability as well as, as the stun from her special ability. So only four, four sets to focus health, defense, speed. Health, defense, speed, and focus. It'd be good to have some resistance in case the enemy has, um, has the ability to apply this negative effect from their basic attack. Such as a taunt, a decreased defense, and so forth. And for the nucleus, you just need to build them for Natalia and Zlux, You just need to build them with high amount of uh, attack, at least four thousand above uh, attack stats, over two hundred critical damage, hundred percent critical rate. So the run will be always consistent. And if your gears are good, you can get some speed. It's the same build, same type of build that I have done for Zlux. So here are his total stats. Over 4,000 attack, over 200% critical damage, and for Zlux, he's a special case because you do not need him to be above, I mean, 100% uh, critical rate because he has this passive ability training, assassin training that provides him with a 30% critical rate and 30 precision. So this 30 precision helps a lot in fighting against enemies that he's weak, uh, weak element at. So this one will prevent the, what's that called, deflection. As you can see here, ability to prevent attacks from being deflected. So this one will counter the enemy's agility. So I think by default, right, if Zelux were to fight a fire element enemy, they will have a default of, I think, 50, 50 agility above, additional 50. So with Zelux, right, is 30 precision plus uh, 30 plus his basic hit 636 to counter the the enemy's 50 agility I guess all right so basically these are his total stats attack critical rate critical damage somehow my guess has a lot of resistance so resistance will help help a lot in case like if you are facing a brand if the brand has low focus, then you can avoid his attack down. The gears are just like random stats. I mean, random random sets. I, I only have like one warrior set. But the but the most important is don't rely too much on sets. But focus on on achieving the stats as you can see here. High high amount of attack, critical rate, critical damage. If you're able to get the the matching sets. That will be a bonus, like let's say if you can gear the Lux in Assassin set to deal extra damage or curse set for additional bonus attack, that would be nice. But uh, for my case, I do not have any good sets for, for him, so I'll just use a mixed set here. Alright, so this is my second team which I use to crowd control enemies which are difficult to defeat. The primary team that I use is a uh, all, all nuke team. And this all nuke team consists of just AoE nukes like Avera, Valera, Hydreza, and one booster. So since 
all these attackers, right, they have speed above, I think above 100, 160, I believe, 100, 160 speed. You you do not need uh, wind strikes, you just need, uh, what's it called, uh, attack up buffer, such as Joseph. So this is the first hero in the team, Joseph. So I just have him above like 180 speed. Uh, focus is important so he can apply the defense down from the Sunday Ring Purgatory spell. So speed, focus, and finally health and defense so to, to make him tanky. And if you have extra resources, then you can just uh, level him up to gain additional health and defense. But it's uh, not necessary. Alternatively, if you do not want to build Joseph, but you have like more powerful legendary heroes, you can use... What's the guy called? Bran. Yeah, Bran. Bran is like a successor of Joseph because he applies. What's it called? I think he has the ability. Yep. Yeah. He he also applies this attack up and defense up, but it's a bigger version which is fifty percent attack and fifty percent defense rather than thirty percent attack and thirty percent defense. And the best part is, this is a AOE. Uh, clans means you remove at least one negative effect from all the team members, which is quite powerful. Plus, he also can provide this shield. So I uh, I was just using Joseph instead of Brand because Joseph uh, ability is much better for my for my usage. Where's Joseph? Because Joseph ability here. As you can see, is this one, his skills here, this one, improvisation, ultimate ability, lasts for 3 turns. So I'm relying on this, uh, on this 3 turns ability. So it can last longer throughout the battle. But if you have Bran, just use Bran instead of Joseph. Okay, so let me just... Set the filtering. So how I built those three attacker nucleus is like for Avera, uh, I just as same as Natalia and the Zlux, you just need to build them with high attack, 100% critical rate and 100% critical damage. And this one I built her with high speed. That's why, as you notice, she has high speed, but this leads to lower lower attack stats and Lower attack, uh, lower critical damage. And this same applies to Hydrisia. She is the second fastest in the, uh, the third fastest in the team with fire resistance speed. Also same as uh, Evira, but slightly high attack, 100% critical rate and 200% critical damage. And finally, Evira is the slowest AOE nuke here. She has around about 4,000 attack. 100% critical rate and over 200% critical damage and 155 speed. But I think the speed you will need to have around about 100. 165 I believe for the Void Tower Heart. I think 100, 160, 160 plus speed. And and also for Hydrisia, I built her with a higher amount of focus around about 48. So she can apply this AOE speed down to to allow the layer to catch up. So this speed down, which reduces the speed by 30, which which means like it's providing an additional bonus speed of to the layer by 30. So her speed will jump to 185 to overtake the enemy turn. So all three of these uh, heroes, I just build them with uh, every set to do uh. To deal 50% bonus damage, as you can see here. So, uh, Evera is in Everest and Raider, while the Lero is also the same Everest and Raider. And Hadrisa is in a mix set of uh, Rich and Vanguard, but with every set. So that's it for this video, hopefully you get something out of this.
to build up your uh, Void Tower art team. If you do learn something from this video, leave a comment below and let me know uh, what, what you've learned. And also, what are the teams that you're using to clear this white tower hut, like uh, floor 20 and floor 30. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you'd like to support me, you can head over to my Patreon channel at uh, patreon.com slash ayumilove to support me there. And for further information on this Awakened Chaos Era guide, you can visit my website. I have a lot of information there regarding on how to build a speed farming team for Adventure Mythic and speed farming those Arcane Dominator dungeons such as the such as the Creed, uh, no, uh, Ash, Ash Magistra. I have uh, two speed farming team for Roaring Tupac and Queen of Tides. They are both free to do play teams that I think I'll be publishing this weekend. For the Wish of Wind and Gemini Dragon, mostly these two relies heavily on Gangelo, which I do not have. So I did not farm these two dungeons compared to these three dungeons here. Alright, uh, thanks for watching this video and have a great weekend. Bye!